All right, so in this project, we're gonna be creating a bootstrap uh, resume landing page, uh, which is really simple and clean. Uh, basically, we have an image at the top here, uh, would, would typically be an image of the actual person. Then uh, we have a tagline, and then we have two um, six column divs, all right? We have an about me section, which is just a text about the person, uh, contact info, which has these different uh, gray icons that I downloaded. Uh, and then down here we have education and experience with WordPress, um, WordPress, <laughs> bootstrap uh, formatted media text here. Uh, we have the year and then the, the title and a little bit of text. Here we have the programming skills, uh, which uses the bootstrap uh, progress bar components. I'll show you how to use those. And then we have services with the alert component. Um, recent projects, we'll just have a list of, these are just sample logos that I found. And then we have a simple footer. So it's really, really simple. Uh, but what's different about this project is we're gonna be using SAS. SAS is a CSS preprocessor and uh, it gives you a, a lot of different features you can use in your CSS and if you go to sasslang.com click on learn SAS it gives you uh, an overview of the different features one of the most popular being variables okay so this allows us to actually use variables in our CSS so we can set something like primary color set that to a value and then use that in any class or ID or element that we want and then if say we want to change the color we can change it once and it'll iterate through all the all the elements that have it instead of having to go to uh, 15 different elements and manually change the color yourself um, nesting is a really good feature as well you can see that we have a nav uh, and then inside that we're, we're taking the nav ul the li and the a tag okay so basically you can structure your css like HTML. Partials, all right, so you can actually uh, include CSS files in CSS files. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but mix ins uh, is basically a function, okay? So here you can see we have a border radius mix in. It even takes an argument and it assigns that argument to the different um, vendor prefixes of the border radius property. All right, so you can read more about SAS. Um, in order to use it, we need to have something to compile it or convert it. And I'm gonna be using Scout, which is a really nice program for Windows and Mac. Uh, and what it does is it takes your, your SAS files and turns them into CSS, or converts and, and generates a CSS file. All right, so um, in order to use Scout, you have to have Java installed on your computer so if you don't have that make sure you install Java alright so what we're gonna do is download this and I'm gonna run it okay so you want to choose your installation uh, location default is program files I'm gonna leave it there I'm going to choose to add a shortcut icon and also to start the application after we install it. All right, so this is the interface. Uh, I'm actually going to delete this. This is from before. All right, so what you want to do is uh, click on the plus sign here. And actually, before we do that, we need to create our project folder. So I'm gonna create one on the desktop and I'm just gonna call it resume page. All right, and I wanna open that up and I'm gonna create a folder called SCSS and that's gonna be the extension that our SAS files use. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna create another folder for CSS, which I want empty for now. 
um, and then I'm going to go to my bootstrap starter template that we created and I'm going to bring over the index JavaScript image and fonts I'm just going to leave the CSS blank for now all right so uh, what we want to do now is create an SCSS uh, file so this will be our main custom st uh, style sheet so style.scss all right so now we can go back to scout and click the plus sign and select our project folder which is desktop resume page and then the input folder is going to be our scss file uh, folder and the output will be the CSS folder. You can also choose your JavaScript folder and your image folder. And as far as the uh, environment, you can choose development or production. I'm going to choose production just because uh, the development one will have all types of comments and stuff. And I'm going to keep the output at expanded. Alright, so if we go ahead and click the play button here, uh, we're going to get an error, and you may get this as well, uh, error 3214, and basically this error is because it can't find your Java installation. Alright, so we're going to have to just change a value in a configuration file. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find the, the location of your Java installation. So if we go to uh, Program Files, you can see we have a Java folder, and then if we click that, uh, this folder name is usually what the problem is. All right, so in another window, I'm going to go to the Scout Program Files, Scout JavaScripts App, and then Process Interaction.js. Okay, so what we need to change, let's do a, a little search here for Java, and it's going to be in this function here Java directory and where it's looking is program files Java JRE7 okay so that's where the issue is what we need to do is just take the name of this this folder whatever yours is and replace JRE7 alright now if we save that alright so we're getting an, un an unable to save message here um, so what we need to do is exit out and then just um, tweak the permissions a little. So we're going to go to properties, security, and then edit. And then under users, I'm going to click on this full control checkbox. Also make sure it's there for administrator and system. Apply. And then hopefully we should be able to edit it. All right, so I saved it, so that worked. Now if we try again, let's actually exit out of Scout totally and then go back in. Okay, now if we press play, now you should get this little stop sign, which means that it's, it's working. The service is running, and whatever we put in our SCSS folder is gonna generate a CSS file. Okay, so let's actually see if it already did. CSS and now you can see that style.css was created. Okay, so if we open that up, let's open that up with Notepad. All right, now remember this is the CSS file. Let's go ahead and edit the SCSS file. And we'll do that in Sublime Text. Okay, so it's empty. What we want to do here is we're going to say body. Um, and we want padding bottom 50 pixels and I'm going to save that and then if we um, open that our CSS file again you can see that it was generated okay um, so we can use things like variables let's, let's uh, for instance We'll set a variable which uses, it has to use an at sign. And let's just say, I don't know, body 
body padding and we'll set that to uh, let's see 40 pixels and then right here we can say pa uh, padding bottom body padding save that and then check the CSS file and it's still 50 let's um let's check hmm did I do that wrong I may have messed up the syntax a little bit oh okay we need to use a dollar sign not an at the at symbol is actually for less which is another uh, preprocessor so I'm just going to change this to uh, dollar sign okay and then we'll save it okay and then we'll open up the CSS file and now you can see that it's changed to 40 alright so I just wanted to give you an example of using variables we're not going to actually use this So now what I want to do is we need the bootstrap CSS file because we don't have that in our directory yet. All right, and we're going to use the SCSS version of it. So in, in the SCSS folder, I'm going to create another folder called vendors. And then I'm going to go to that, that and I'm going to bring over from the starter template the bootstrap.css file except I want to change it um, I want to change it to underscore bootstrap.scss okay now the reason for the underscore is I don't want it to generate a separate bootstrap.css file what I want to do is just include it in our main style um, CSS so inside style SCSS at the top, we want to say import and we want to go in vendors slash underscore bootstrap dot SCSS. All right, and we'll save that and then we should check the, the CSS and open up style sheet uh, style.css and you can see now that bootstrap all the styles are in there and then at the bottom you can see our actual um, style.scss stuff which is just the, the body right now the padding bottom alright so that's all set up if we open up the index page we should get the same thing. We have all the bootstrap code, obviously, because the nav bar is displaying, and we're ready to go. So in the next video, uh, we'll start editing the index file and start to develop our page.